Hi, I'm Carrie Jacobs and recently I've been delving into the world of digital art and that can be a scary world filled with tools and filters and layers and all manner of things that can bamboozle and bewilder. Um, so I thought I'd take you through a piece uh, that I completed recently and take you through the process that I use, some of the techniques that I've been kind of figuring out as I go along um, and hopefully that will inspire you to pick up a paint program and uh, make some beautiful art for yourself. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, yeah, so we're starting off here just um, taking a reference image of a horse from Google. Um, simple, really. I, I would normally like sketch this from uh, from eye, but I was feeling a bit lazy today, so I thought, uh, you know, I'll just trace it. I'll just trace it, why not? It's okay to do that. I mean, you know, we all trace things occasionally. So yeah, just getting a very basic outline, just placing details. Obviously, this is on a separate layer, so I'm going to remove the, uh, the reference image and there you go in about two minutes you've got a nice a nice looking horse <laughs> uh, so yeah just put the black background in black and this is a um, sort of a texture brush I use it quite a lot for my spacey cloud nebula um, it's uh, yeah it's really good for just laying down big areas of kind of fluffy cloudy looking stuff um, I realised here that I've um, yeah I should have put these different colours onto the different layers, uh, which actually came to around to bite me on the bum later on. Um, so yeah, actually removing the that blue section there um, just so I can put it on a different layer and, and put it in. Which you'll see in a little sec in, a, in a second. So this is just laying down really basic shapes and colours at the moment, like just getting a feel for how I want the, um, the finished piece to look. If you compare it to the finished piece, you'll see it looks like absolutely nothing like it. Um, but that's fine for now. Um, so now, yeah, just moving on to the to, to the horse. Um, just wanted to kind of create this sort of ghostly mystical kind of translucent horse <laughs> so um picking up on the areas where the um the light would be hitting it i guess um i'm using a uh, an airbrush tool here um just to get a sort of a basic basic layout of the uh of the shape of it This is definitely the um, the the ugly phase <laughs> of the uh, of the painting. Every every painting has a has an ugly phase, and uh, you just need to get through it. Um, a lot of people get stuck on this phase where they you know they get to a certain point like this, and they've been working on it for like you know maybe maybe half hour or so by now. I've been working on this probably a bit more. Um, and uh, then they just throw their arms up in the air and think, oh, I can't do this because it looks terrible. And then they give up. But you'll see, hopefully, that um, you know you just add a few layers and uh, it all comes together in the end. Now, just neatening up the edges of the, of the horse a bit. It's a nice handy hint if you can... I have a button, I have a hotkey set to flip my, my brush, whatever brush I'm using it can flip it into eraser mode basically so it it um, turns whatever brush I'm using into an eraser, um, which is what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm using a, a small brush just to, to cut off the uh, the edges, loosen up the edges a bit, after the, uh, the airbrush has that very soft edge. I'm going in, um, I'm using predominantly a um, of a, a wet paintbrush here. Um, it's sort of got a, a slight blending effect to it, which is really nice if you want to get interesting kind of painty looks. So you, you'll notice as I go in, try neaten up these lines a little bit. It's sort of blending in with the with the surrounding colours quite nicely. Which gets, makes it just look a bit more interesting. Been for quite a while here. I'll just be fiddling around with the uh, with the horse, making it look 
looking at how I want basically. This is a, quite a nice effect, I quite liked this this effect with the, uh, so that's just a, a blending brush sweeping it outwards to try and um, give it sort of a, a sense of glowing and movement. It was about this point I realised I'd deleted the um, the reference image rather than just hiding the layer it was on, which was a bit of a silly move because I could have really done with it. But at this point, I was trying to figure out what <laughs> what the horse actually was supposed to look like. I think I got away with it. I'm tucking the eye in there, putting the eyelid around the eye. Nice bright glowing eye. Again with the, um, the blending brush to um, sweep out the colours. Gives a really nice glowing effect. I do like that. Try not to overuse the blending brush because it can be it can be a really um, it, it gives you a really nice cool effect. You think oh this is really nice but then um, if you overuse it it just looks a bit uh, messy. definitely learnt that quite quickly that I was definitely overusing it when I when I first started. It's an example of where I just took something and ran with it. I did something by accident where I put in these these sort of bright lines that have really made sort of features of the, the of the horse's face really stand out. They were supposed to just be guides of where the um, the horse's features and the bone structure stru uh, structure was going, um, but they ended up looking quite good. Um, so I ran with them and and, and I've actually uh, accentuated them and added more little lines. Um, I think it looks quite cool, like a like a tribal design on his on his face there. And now onto the hair. I really, I mean, the hair is my least favourite section of of um of any of any any painting really, which is kind of weird considering I I paint animals like all the time. That's my thing. Um, but yeah, hair is a bit of a, uh, I don't know, Achilles heel for me, I guess. <laughs> but um, it's just about being patient and adding layers. It's all about layers. Layers. Yeah, so just using a, um, a variety of of lightnesses of, of, of brush, just a nice thin uh, thin brush, all different um, kind of hues and tones, and just mixing them all together. The more the more strokes you do, the more they're blending together, and the more interesting little little variations you get. And if you just keep on going back and forth over the same area with multiple strokes um, you'll eventually build something up go in here with that so this is an airbrush tool just going in adding a little bit of shadow in places <laughs> it's always a good um, tip in any art, this tip that I find is useful in any form of art, if your, your picture is looking a bit flat and uninteresting just um, add contrast, add contrast, like make your darks darker and your lights lighter and um, 9 times out of 10 it will give a quite a nice effect. 
Because effectively what I'm trying to do here is add some some shadow to the dark areas and highlight the, the lighter areas a bit more. I don't want to forget that little quiff at the top. Yeah, so you can see where this wet paintbrush comes in to its own when you're, when you're doing work like that on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, on the hair, all your strokes kind of blend into one another and make quite nice interesting effects. For work like this where I'm kind of meeting up these lines, I, I have a hotkey for the uh, for like the pick colour button and I just sort of um, pick colours either side of the line and just, just merge it all in. Now onto the background. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm going to take, hopefully take that, that mess of a, of a thing at the start and turn it inside that actually looks nice. So I'm just going in with the airbrush tool, um, black over the top of it and sweeping, sweeping up and down it really and just, just moving the brush around and, and waiting until I see effects that I like and then once you see an effect that you like you kind of run with it. Um, Adding more red into the bottom, black at the top, red at the bottom. It's just, it's just to and fro in between black and red. Just playing around with it. That's the wonderful thing about digital art is that you don't have to worry about going over paint that's still wet or anything like that. You can just go back and forth and back and forth as much as you like and it's not going to turn into a, a big muddy mess. You have a, yeah, the clouds is is something that I, I do like playing around with in these in these spacey things and uh, yeah, adding shadows onto the backs of them adds so much. But the problem with this tool, that I find this this um, this texture tool that I've been using is that it's really really fuzzy and doesn't give you very good definition. If you so what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of just with a thin. I think that same paint, a wet paint brush that I was using uh, before. Um, just going in, adding little, little bits of detail here and there, just to so your eye can pick up on sharper artifacts within the uh, within the cloud. It kind of helps. And that actually, uh, so that I'm going over with a dark airbrush there to uh, up the top of it to, to kind of push that into the background. So when the horse is back on top, you can see that. It, well, kind of push, yeah, makes it look flatter, like the horse is sort of on top of the clouds now. And by this point, I am, I've already kind of decided that the, I hate the colours. The colours just are not working together whatsoever. Um, so I'm going to sort that out in a, in a little bit. But for now, just... Just adding little bits of detail. Yes, yeah, so I'm here. I'm adding a light blue, light blue strips in just to try and make it look like it's all um, kind of glowing. You add in a much lighter variant of something on top. And, yeah. It's always going to give it kind of a, a glowing, a glowing effect. Yeah, and now on a, on a new layer, on new layer on top, adding some more pink clouds on top. It kind of really it pushes the the horse into the clouds and makes it look like it's part of it really what I was going after. That's really what I wanted, wanted from the start. That's really, really brought it in. Now changing the colour here. I'm just using a, um, I'm just changing the, the hue of the whole layer. Just, just sweeping through the colours until I find one that I like the look of basically. 
The nice thing about another nice thing about those digital art is that you can just completely change like the colours, you know, on a whim, basically. Now giving the horse the same treatment, just sweeping through different colours until I find one that I look like the look of. Yeah, and as soon as I landed on that pink and it kind of blended in with the clouds, it looked like the, it's now emerging from the clouds, which is, yeah, it's kind of part of the clouds, which is perfect. The weird artefacts there from, uh, from where I changed the colour, but we can neaten those up, that's no problem. Just paint over them. And we're on our home straight, pretty much. Oh yes, yeah, my favourite part. Adding the stars. It really brings these space fiend pictures together. Suddenly it just... It, it makes sense. And these are, these are all brushes, like a variety of brushes that I kind of um, cobbled together and I, I built. Um, uh, for, for the purpose and uh, yeah there we are pretty much finished so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, hopefully it's inspired you to dust off your old paint programs and get out there into the big wide world and do some art and uh, if it has then please send it through to me because I would love to see it um, but for now that is it from me um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. And if you want to come around and hang out with me on stream, um, I stream on Twitch uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Friday evenings. Um, and I'd love to see you there. So um, until then, here we go. Oh, links, links are in the description down, down, down here. They're not here at the moment, I mean, there's nothing, this is just the floor. Um, but when I upload the video, it'll be blink. There. Figuratively. There.